Hello again everyone, Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube Astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Capricorn April 2019 horoscope forecast part one of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is as far as April goes, the sun will be in Aries from the 1st until the 20th. So the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now at this time, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on one's home, family life, uh, emotional security, the end or the latter part of life. Uh, also, uh, it could be uh, roots, uh, traditions, who you are uh, at the core. It could be shining the light on some Aries qualities at the core, such as uh, perhaps being more aggressive than you were originally cognizant of more assertive more forceful having more even more enterprise and initiative and more courage and fortitude uh, this could also given that this is aries energy a lot of this fourth house energy may be done with a lot of assertiveness a lot of aggression uh, really very forcefully but at the same time just be careful Capricorn because Aries energy could be very impetuous and impulsive and it's really about looking before you leap so to speak as far as this goes and even though I mean Capricorn of course is a sign that's very prudent and cautious and premeditated when you have Aries energy hitting something it still can affect people collectively and it's just very important to be guarded against something that may uh, that may really be very impulsive and, and, and wind up making the wrong decision because of that on something. Uh, so anyway, also to this energy may be more confrontational as well as far as people uh, that are connected in your uh, fourth house uh, at this time. So anyway, next thing up, as far as April goes, the sun will be in Taurus from the 20th until the 30th. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on love, uh, romance, uh, fun, amusement, enjoyment, uh, speculation, investments, even per attaining personal popularity, even gambling, uh, children, hobbies, creative endeavors uh, as well. And given that this is Taurus energy, a lot of this could be done very plotting, methodical manner and done with a lot of perseverance, patience and uh, persistence as well. Unlike the Aries energy, this energy is much more ponderous and it's really looking a lot more before you leap, uh, so to speak. Uh, this could shine the light on it, uh, perhaps a Taurus love interest. If you are unattached at this time, it could be a Taurus sun, moon or ascendant person or simply one that embodies Taurus like uh, characteristics uh, at this time. And also perhaps really uh, in, in focusing perhaps on some kind of Taurus fun amusement or enjoyment. It could be doing something that requires some endurance such as long distance running. It could be cultivating, gardening. Uh, it could be doing something, maybe coin collecting, anything that could be Taurus uh, related, playing a Taurus like game such as uh, Monopoly, something, anything that would be very, which would really you would correspond with the zodiac sign uh, Taurus. So, anyway, uh, the thing about uh, this too is, and also too, if you're doing anything with gambling, the good thing about Taurus energy, it's more premeditative than Aries and more plotting and more ponderous and more deliberate. And it's not something where you're going to necessarily be very impetuous. You're likely going to focus on maybe something that could be a very low risk uh, type gambling or, or thing of a speculative nature or investment at this time if you do so. Anyway, next thing up. There will be a new moon in Aries on April 5th. So the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now at this time, well, this could uh, manifest in some cases with a new uh, Aries family member. Uh, it could be a new Aries person you might start a connection with, you feel close to home with. Uh, it may be an Aries sun, moon, or ascendant person, or simply one that embodies Aries-like characteristics. This could also be the start, starting point where you might start to express some Aries qualities that you may have at the core. Uh, it could be expressing more aggression, more assertiveness, initiative and enterprise and courage and fortitude. And also too, 
this could be a time too where you might decide to, to start something that might be about um, connected with your safety and security, something where you can comp, really do things, uh, maybe getting like such as a gun permit uh, for safety and security and emotional security since guns, you know, things with guns, gunfire can be associated uh, with Aries. So it's things to combat possible uh, home invaders, uh, so to speak. And of course, Aries energy is about uh, combat, of course. And it might be a time where you might start some new uh, Aries uh, traditions. It could be something um, connected. It might be sports related, something with welding or carpentry, uh, something that might be uh, really uh, something that's connected maybe with leadership, uh, perhaps uh, anything that could be Aries uh, related. I mean, it could be some kind, just anything that could you could say, I mean, being a connected uh, with uh, the zodiac sign Aries, it might be doing some kind of adventure sports. It could be something like uh, canoeing or some kind of rafting or mountain or rock climbing, dirt biking, something that you would say, or maybe, uh, or it could be something going to some kind of gun expo or, or, or something, anything that would be associated with the zodiac sign Aries. Anyway, next thing up. There will be a full moon in Libra on April 19th, so the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, well, uh, this could manifest in a multitude of ways. This could be about uh, the end or culmination, completion of a Libra career. It could be something connected with arbitration or negotiation, something with the law, such as being an attorney, um, lawyer, paralegal, bail of court reporter, something with art sculpting, drawing, painting, being a graphic artist, uh, doing, uh, could also be where a matter might be concluded regarding justice and fairness, regarding your reputation in public image. And also too, when you're talking about a full moon in astrology, excuse me, it could be a time where one may become really tired, exasperated, or full of something. Hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that, I'm back. Anyway, it might be a time where you may become tired, full, exasperated at somebody that's overly superficial, overly passive, or indolent, complacent, indecisive, or ambivalent. It could be the dominant parent, which is often the father. It could be an authority figure. Uh, it's somebody prominent in your career, or maybe your public image or reputation, such as a promoter. Also, too, when you're talking about full moons in astrology, this could represent the unveiling or reflect the revelation or unveiling of something. This could be, in some cases, it could be a criminal record uh, some, or somebody in trouble with the law that might be 10th house related. It could be the dominant parent, which is often uh, the father. It could be someone prominent in your career, your public image somebody uh it, it could be somebody and that, that anybody that could be 10 us related somebody you might know that might be in might be a business person like a businessman or might be in some business you're connected with uh an older person perhaps and also too this could be about finally perhaps reaching a uh, some kind of like it could be a legal settlement or some kind of negotiation or compromise or reconciliation that could be with somebody 10th house related. Interestingly, when you, you start with the new moon in Aries, I think in some cases this might manifest with people uh, starting, it might be a contentious situation with somebody, but then you have the full moon in Libra, of course, is about reconciliation. I believe the full moon in Libra is also gonna be at 29 degrees, a critical degree, and also 29 degrees, of course, in astrology does represent endings and culminations. So this could be very, it could really emphasize and accentuate an, an ending uh, as, far as, uh, as far as astrologically how that goes. So anyway, Next thing up, Mercury will be in Pisces as far as April goes from the 1st until the 17th. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now at this time, well, this could be about having ambiguous or cryptic communications uh, with siblings, cousins, neighbors. Uh, it could be uh, perhaps somebody that you know through your short journeys or a person uh, through your early, was prom in your early education. 
Remember, as I've spoken about previously, Mercury can also be about siblings. This could be about Pisces siblings. They could be Pisces sun, moon, or ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Pisces-like characteristics that might figure strongly uh, more in your communications at this time, in your short journeys. It could be errands. It could be with people you know from your early education. Uh, maybe also as well uh, with your neighbors. Uh, this could also be something to be very careful because pi uh, Mercury can also be about thieves and third house is like your neighbors and neighborhood, I would say. So in Pisces people, I mean, Pisces energy is very deceptive and duplicitous. They're good at casting facades and camouflaging. So it's very careful even to be guarded more with your neighbors at this time. People may not be what they seem. They could be carried, putting on a very good subterfuge. Uh, and of course, I mean, when you're Pisces energy, you're less alert uh, anyway at this time. And also, too, I mean, as far as, I mean, you know, cryptic communications go, a lot of that could be more predicated and dependent on aspects. aspects. This makes the points in your chart. Or I would say, I mean, say an adverse aspect to, to your natal Neptune. Or say net, you're having a transit Neptune make an adverse aspect to your natal Mercury, your third house cusper or third house ruler. It, it might be a little bit harder to really understand everything people are saying and things could really be very misconstrued and ambiguous and not readily understood. So anyway, this could also be thinking more idealistically about third house people and also talking about manifold Pisces subjects such as poetry, dancing, photography, chemistry, the metaphysical, which includes astrology, um, anything with water. So anyway, next thing up. Well, Mercury will be in Aries as far as April goes from the 17th until the 30th. So the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, uh, this could be about having very uh, direct and forthright and outspoken uh, communications uh, with the home, uh, with family members. Uh, it could be about speaking directly really more to yourself about who you are at the core and uh, really also in talking about Aries qualities you may have at the core, such as having enterprise initiative, being forceful, uh, having courageous, having fortitude, uh, doing things with little hesitation and procrastination. So I've stated before to Aries, uh, Mercury can also be about siblings. This could be about Aries um, siblings. It could be Aries sun, moon, or ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Aries like characteristics that might uh, figure more prominently in your home and family life. It could be about also um, your emotional security. It could be about uh, matters with traditions uh, as well and getting in touch with your roots and your ancestry uh, at this time. And also, too, I mean, this could be a time where you're doing a lot of more communication with family members in general, very, again, very direct, very outspoken. And also uh, doing a really, it could be a lot of communications in terms of trying to get in touch with your roots and ancestry and really communicating very spontaneously, very, very abruptly, uh, not really, you know, thinking about maybe what you're saying beforehand. It might be a time where you're, you're questioning people, you know, family members regarding your roots and your ancestry and the communications may be more forceful because you might be trying to get uh, answers really quickly as Aries energy, of course, could be very impatient. Uh, so anyway, last but not least, Venus will be in Pisces as far as April goes from the 1st until the 20th. So the third houses will be emphasized and highlighted. Now at this time, uh, Capricorn, if you're unattached, you may connect with a, uh, could be a Pisces sun, moon, or ascendant person, or simply one that embodies Pisces characteristics. It could be somebody in your neighborhood. Uh, maybe it could be a neighbor, someone you might have known from your early uh, education, someone prominent in your short journeys. Um, another thing, another thing too is, well, when you look at this, this could be um, about perhaps, I mean, you're talking about Venus and Pisces energy. This could be 
something connected with, I mean, you got to be very careful against uh, fraudulent, uh, deceptive financial uh, dealings at this time. And um, really, and, and really especially could be with perhaps uh, with neighbors, with cousins, with siblings, people that are prominent in your short journeys. It could be a time uh, to, when, when you're looking at Venus and Pisces energy, this could also be about the enjoyment of Pisces-like things in your neighborhood uh, with cousins, siblings, neighbors, people prominent in your short journeys. It could be doing things uh, connected like with the metaphysical, which can include astrology, poetry, dancing, swimming, uh, aquatics, anything that could be Pisces uh, related. So, and also too, I mean, you have to be very, I mean, careful to, I mean, again, uh, Venus and Pisces energy. Uh, it could be where, I mean, you know, people in your relationships in your neighborhood, they might be a little bit more ambiguous and cryptic than usual. And again, this could be where you might be dealing, you know, with, with fraud and more deception on a financial level with third house people. And a lot of this, of course, could be uh, dependent, predicated on aspects. This makes the points in your chart an adverse aspect to Neptune, for example, can maybe reaffirm this energy or say if you're having, um, for example, you're making, you're having a transit Neptune make an adverse aspect to your natal uh, Venus or your second house cusp or even second house ruler. It might be harder to gauge things on a, as far as things that are related to things of a monetary uh, nature and fraudulent undertakings and somebody playing some kind of uh, con game, for example, and not being overly honest regarding financial dealings. So it's important to remember that at this time. So anyway, people, uh, that will conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Capricorn April 2019 horoscope forecast part one of two. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Capricorn April 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.